What's up, people? It's your girl, Adiola. First of all, my deepest condolence to everyone who lost somebody, uh, a son, a daughter, a wife, some of whom were pregnant, by the way. I mean, everybody lost something last week, Saturday. For those who might not have heard, some Nigerian officials organized a senseless job recruitment screening exercise that killed about 20 people, 20, across Nigeria last weekend. I mean, it doesn't make any sense that anyone had to die in such a tragic and irrational manner. It's not worth it at all. You know, so many times on this show, I've talked about the alarming rate of unemployment in Nigeria. Nigeria, the fact that 75% of our youth have either been sitting at home for years or riding Okada, doing bus conductors to row to row, which Kenyans call matatu. Many of them becoming apprentices in hair salons and also tailoring shops or teaching without being trained to be a teacher. And as a result, you know, we now have more kidnappers than ever, many of whom are graduates. And definitely we have more scammers now than ever. I'm telling you, unemployment is a huge problem in Nigeria. And and what happened last weekend is my witness. You know that more than 700,000 people showed up for less than 5,000 job openings at the immigration service. 700,000, what a shame, Nigeria. And we tell the whole world that we are one of the fastest growing economies in Africa. I mean, what does that even mean? And by the way, the presidency said that um, they created 1.6 million jobs last year. Call it the whole do you know where we can find evidence of these jobs? Like, no, so you, never mind. Why would you invite people to the stadium to write a common job screening examination? Who's going to grade 700,000 papers? Like, seriously, are these people even thinking? Why can't this be done online, on the internet? I know that uh, internet can be very slow, but you know, when people are desperate, they will find a way to get it done. At least we feel, you know, American visa applications online visa lotteries you know and if you must see them physically why can't they show up in batches but no 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 these people are too greedy and corrupt do you know that they charged each of the applicants 1000 naira 1000 in order for them to take the examination eh? how much is that in dollars eh? about really six dollars that's it Ah, Kai, the value of Naya has really gone down. Seriously, how ridiculous. I can't believe that a government agency would charge applicants for a job that they have a high tendency of not getting. <laughs> Do you know that as of 6 a.m. in Abuja, Lagos, Bini, Portacourt, Kano, and 30 other venues, people were filling up the stadium even though the exam was scheduled for 4 p.m. in the evening. Yes. And you know, it's not just young people that showed up. This woman was one of the applicants. Mm-mm. Mm, 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 mm. Only one entrance was opened at the Abuja Stadium and more than 200,000 people showed up. Hello? Even though the stadium capacity is only 60,000, which means more people were outside the stadium than inside. A stampede ensued because the immigration examiners only came with a few question papers. At least 10 people died in Abuja alone that day, including pregnant women. So you can imagine the sorrow of their husbands husbands as we speak. Four others were reported dead in Port Harcourt, three people died in Mina, three pregnant women were also trampled to death in Benin City. One of the ladies that died in Port Harcourt, Lucy, was supposed to get married on April 9th. Just try to imagine what her parents and her fans are going through right now. Although many are now in stable conditions, some are still in critical conditions. Now this lady, for example, was there with her husband. Both of them were trampled on. The husband was bruised all over his body, but he managed to get up. Unfortunately, the wife was just coughing blood by the time policemen found her. And now she suffered a broken rib and scapula. Her lungs collapsed. The doctors had to insert an iron in her rib and they had to drain the internal bleeding. It's, I can't even start to describe so many things that a lot of people have been through. The husband had graduated since 2000 and six without a job so he's been driving a taxi for years on top of how critical the wife's situation is right now all they are concerned with is how to get money for her treatment because clearly she needs surgery already they've spent more than 100,000 naira since this thing happened and this is just one person so I mean you can read more about her story if you just google her name Grace Omoagon so you can imagine what so many people have been going through since that incident last Saturday 
Now, not only that, thousands of people lost their original university certificates, their diplomas, and, you know, it's because they were all struggling to save their lives. Do you know that many of the people who lost their credentials may not recover from that for months? I mean, it's not that easy in Nigeria to go back to your school and ask them to issue you a new diploma, especially if you don't know anyone. You know, I say it all the time that we have a problem and it's a serious one. And it's so sad because we don't even know that we have a problem. This is not the first time that people will die in stampedes in Nigeria, yet we don't set up the necessary precautions. The saddest part is this whole thing was a scam, in my opinion, because we all know that when it comes to federal jobs in Nigeria, all the big people have already submitted the list of their candidates. You know, the governor would have sent in the names of his own people who are looking for jobs, and the senator would have sent in his own list. The first lady would even send her own list as well. I mean, it's all about connections, man, no man, you get what I'm saying? Not about how good you her. And that ministry must hire all those people whose names have been submitted by the big people. At the end of the day, maybe only 2,000 spots were left for this 700,000 applicants to fight for. People were literally fighting to enter the stadium. They fought to get exam papers. Some wrote the exam, others did not even get question papers. I mean, it was chaotic. Take a look at this. <laughs> A good exam, a well conducted exam, can be conducted in this kind of atmosphere. Yes. 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 You can see, we are holding him. See, that is the level of information. As the nature applicant is sharing question papers. because they are desperate and by the way did i just see a soldier slap a candidate <laughs> Acceptable. Mm, 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 mm. My people, in fact, those around you would blame you for getting slapped by the soldier. You know, why do we accept things that we should not accept in Nigeria? That is part of the problem. I'm telling you, they treat us like we are nothing, and this is not right. When are we going to stand up and demand an end to things like this in Nigeria? Now, just imagine the interior minister said, those who died lost their lives because they were impatient. I said, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, I shook my head. I said, Kai, how did this man become a minister? And where is he from again? Then he said that, oh, you should blame doctors and blame bankers and blame all those people. We were already employed that these people were the ones that came to write exams. That was what caused the stampede. I said, Chad, why hasn't this man been fired? For saying things like that, when people are mourning their loved ones. Mr. President, wait, oh, I forgot that, uh, you know, yes, when it comes to Mr. President, he has to set up a committee first to look into what exactly did the man say, yeah, you know, before he would take any action. Yeah, uh, it's very sad. You know, I heard that the minister's wife owns the company that conducted the recruitment, as well as the wife of David Mark, that's the Nigerian Senate president, although she denied it. You see, that is why the minister was trying to downplay what happened. I like the fact, though, that Mr. President said that they must return the 1,000 naira that they collected from all the applicants. My question is, how would you do that? And how did you keep record of those who paid since they didn't do it online? Are they going to invite people to come back to collect their money physically and risk another disaster? Or is somebody going to be calling those 700,000 people to ask for their account numbers so they can deposit the money in their accounts? And how are they going to do it? 
<laughs> you know, Mr. President also commanded that three family members of each of those who died must be employed by this organization as well as all those who were injured. I think that's a really good thing, you know. Uh, I just wish that people won't be injured before we can think about, you know, getting them jobs. Seriously, Mr. President, to be honest with you, even though that was a good gesture, it didn't really solve the problem. Seriously, Nigeria is broken right now. You need to stay at home and fix it. Where is he again? I heard that he's been traveling out again. Mr. President, stay at home. Sit down at home and fix this thing. Otherwise, with these many people unemployed in one country, I'm telling you, we're sitting on a keg of gunpowder. But you know... <laughs> What do I know? I mean, I don't know anything, I beg. I'm just keeping it real. Now, speaking of education and unemployment rate, do you guys know that all polytechnics in Nigeria, as well as all colleges of education, all monotechnics, bitechnics, colleges of education, colleges of agriculture, they've all been on indefinite strike since October? Actually, they've been on and off before then. They were on strike for months last year before October. But since October of last year till now, they've been on indefinite strike. It's very sad that, you know, we were all shouting when universities were on strike last year. You remember how they were on strike for like six months? But no one is shouting for polytechnics and our colleges of education. Why? First of all, these lecturers are protesting the dilapidated condition of some of their campuses as well as laboratories and do you know that the federal government is yet to implement the approved salary package since 2009 2009 five years my people five years of waiting for your hard-earned money where is that done where they're also protesting how some state governments keep appointing unqualified people as rectors and provosts can you imagine you guys know that these things are now based on who you know it's all politics you know so many times the state government would bring somebody that is not even as educated as some of the lecturers and make him the provost over the lecturers just imagine not only that there's this huge discrimination against those who graduated from polytechnics and colleges of education as opposed to those who graduated from universities in nigeria when job hunting and that is not right that should not be the case and these lecturers are tired of people looking down on their graduates those are just some of the reasons why these lecturers are still on strike i feel sorry though for the fact that now in nigeria you only know when you enroll role in school you can never predict when you will graduate so long as it's a government school already the students have lost a whole academic session so when will the federal government meet the demands of these lecturers so that the students can go back to school when huh? some people argue that the lecturers should just resume but to be honest with you there's no way that they would teach as they should if they are not getting their dues you get what i'm saying which is why some of them would show up maybe once in a week sometimes even once in two weeks yeah i've experienced that when i was in school in nigeria also how do you get the best education if you don't have all the right equipment that you need for practical training enough of theory please we need practice based training i think that these lecturers have tried for five years if you ask me i think they tried unfortunately the government that we have right now doesn't know the value of quality education should be our first lady says she graduated from one uh, college of education like this hey, madam when are you going to intervene seriously it is bewildering because we have a president that has a phd my people yet he doesn't seem to care about education that just doesn't make sense if you really have a phd you will care about education in your country we also have a finance minister who is not only harvard trained but has also worked at a world bank for decades so i would think that these people will prioritize money for our education sector but i guess i'm wrong but you know i'm just hoping that very soon they will meet the demands of these lecturers so that they can call off the strike but you guys know i do not anything i beg i'm just keeping it real so have you all been following the national conference going on in Nigeria? I mean, where do I even start? Just so you know, I'm always for dialogue. I mean, I'm glad to see Nigerians come together from all parts of the country to dialogue on how we can overcome many adversities and make progress as a nation. I'm all for that. But personally, I just don't think that we needed to wait for 
a national conference before we would get things done in Nigeria. I don't know what this conference can do that the National Assembly cannot do or the Senate or the House of Representatives. Don't we have representatives from various parts of the country at the National Assembly and at the House of Rep? First of all, I've heard that this conference would last for three months. I'm like, why? Why? What are we discussing for three months? Eh? And then they said that each of the 492 or 93 delegates and six secretariat officials will be given 12 million naira each. Nigeria, 12 million. Eh? Is this a conference or a bazaar? Eh? By the way, eh, Kolidowu, how much is that altogether? Eh? 5.9 just you know my friend just say 6 billion 6 billion naira my people and already some of them are saying that 12 million is not enough they said the government must pay their aids that came with them as well as their drivers i said hey now wow aids and drivers they're all becoming millionaires because of this uh, national conference eh? what kind of country is this all together, do you know that the federal government budgeted 7 billion naira for this national conference? Of course, they would be serving them lunch for the next three months. That is part of, you know, the bill. I said, I didn't know that we have extra 7 billion naira somewhere. I would have suggested that we use that money to pay the polytechnic lecturers, you know, or fix some of our roads where people are still dying while the national conference is going on. Or that they should use that money to create jobs for some of our young graduates. You get what I'm saying? I'm not saying that good things will not come out of this national conference, so I beg you. But so far, I'm just not impressed right now. First of all, people were fighting over allowance. I'm, I'm like, what? And then they fought each other over sitting arrangements. Did you hear about that? How ridiculous. And then they fought over, should we pray Muslim prayers or Christian prayers? Ah, some people are trying to turn this into religious. I said, Chee, chee. when are we going to get to serious issues hello <laughs> but you know my biggest problem with this conference is the fact that some of the delegates appointed are corrupt and we know them in fact many of them have admitted it openly i saw names like a uh, chief and uh, i mean a uh, chief uh, Olaba Day judge on the list. I'm like, what? Someone who was convicted for corruption and sentenced to 30 months jail time before his conviction was dismissed by the Supreme Court. I saw the former River State Governor Peter Odili, whom the EFCC accused of enriching himself from the treasury of a uh, River State. Also, the former governor of Bauchi, that is uh, Governor Adamu Moazu, who was charged by the EFCC for corruption after he left office. And of course, you know, former governor governor of Bayelsa State, <laughs> Alamesia, who was found guilty of corruption and sentenced to prison before he was later pardoned by Mr. President, just to name a few. Why are these people at the national conference? Why? I mean, are they not part of the problem if they can retrieve the money that Alamesia stole? Just that alone, I would really be impressed with this conference. And many Nigerians have complained that they don't know who their delegates are. They don't know the people that are representing them. And not only that, they didn't have a say in what the delegates are going to say in uh, Abuja. How can you say that is a proper representation of the people? If truly this is a national conference, all the Iyalojas, uh, the taxi drivers, the Molue drivers, the widows, young people, unemployed graduates, everyone should feel represented. I feel like the whole community should have meetings with their delegates before the delegates will go and say whatever they are saying at the national conference. But no, a lot of people don't even know who their delegates are. Anyway, it's still going on for the next three months <laughs> but you know i'll be sure to keep you posted and you guys know that i don't know anything i beg i'm just keeping it real Moving on to zimbabwe a 65 year old man has confessed to impregnating his own daughter twice twice my people wonders shall never end all because his wife is late and he wanted to do it so instead of marrying another wife he turned his own daughter to his sex toy can you imagine and he fathered two children mm -mm -mm. that is an abomination so now he's the father of his own grandchildren i mean i don't even know how to put it now what pissed me off the most is that he's claiming that the gods were the ones who instructed him to do that i said eh, how convenient we can all just do whatever we want now and say the gods appear to us you know just because he's a herbalist you know he's a witch doctor in uh Bezha village in umizingwane district now he thinks he can delude everybody 
of what is right and wrong? Seriously? Hmm. Can you imagine this man? Who, and speaking of delusions, did you guys read what Mugabe said about Nigeria? <laughs> Ah, you know, this man said that Zimbabweans are now almost behaving like Nigerians who have to be corruptly bribed for every service. According to Mugabe, when he used to go to Nigeria, he would have to carry extra cash in his pocket to corruptly pay for everything, including paying crew members before they will start the plane so that he can fly. Eh? Yes. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Now, when I heard that, I said to myself, Mugabe did not lie. He didn't lie. Nigeria is very corrupt. It is true. I mean, you have to pay your way through many things and corruption in Nigeria is one of the things that somebody like me talk about on this show. But you know where I have a problem is that that statement was coming from Mugabe. Mm -hmm. No, he did. No, he did. No. Yes, he did. If this man can just admit that he himself is corrupt, I won't have any issue at all. At all. At all. But he's painting it as if he is an angel. He is not corrupt. Nigeria is corrupt. I said for where? You know, that is why on this show every week, I make sure I talk about Nigeria before I talk about other countries. So no one would say, why don't you address your own problem first? Yes, we have problems in Nigeria and I'm addressing them, but I'm making sure that I talk about Nigeria before I talk about other places. So you can open that your mouth to insult Nigeria. Can you believe this man? Hey, see me see trouble. Look at a pot, a black pot covered in charcoal, calling a kettle black. I look at you. Where do I even start from? Is it the fact that he has basically become a colonial master over his own people, refusing to step down after 30 years in power? Or the fact that him and his family have enriched themselves at the expense of the people of Zimbabwe so that you can no longer afford to spend your own currency and banks are practically running out of cash? Where do I start from? Seriously? Mugabe, no, let me tell you this. Nigerians may be corrupt. Well, some of us, not all of us. So yes, Nigerians may be corrupt, but mm -mm. Mm -mm. If you were to be in Nigeria with all these things that you're doing, they would have kicked you out a long time ago. That I can assure you. And guess what? I'm just keeping it real. So the Gambian president, Yaya Jamain, has announced that he's getting rid of English as the official language of the Gambia. Give it up for my yeah, yeah, Jobe. You know, sometimes I wonder where he comes up with all these ideas. To be honest, that man never seems to amaze me. I'm not saying that English has to be the official language of any country. By all means, no, 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 no. I would love to actually see Gambia come up with their own official language. But how do you alone, just you, make such a decision without consulting the people, the people that you're ruling? Why don't you hear their opinion first? Just imagine how shocked many Gambians were the day that this president announced that he's getting rid of English language they were all like what what did what did he what are we supposed to do now <laughs> which language are we supposed to speak <laughs> you know the other funny thing is that he doesn't have a plan no 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 he's yet to decide till now the language that would replace English remember that he makes all the executive decisions by himself so now Gambians are asking Mr. President in what language should we address Address you, eh? Not only that, he's from the Jola tribe, which is a minority group in Gambia. So, is he going to impose the language of his minority tribe on the whole of Gambia? You know, those are some of the questions that people have been asking. And I think that he's funny that he actually made that announcement in English while we're still on Jermaine. You know, he just won in a new chief justice of Gambia. This one is a Pakistani chief justice, Eli Nawaz, and he would be the ninth Chief Justice since Jamey came to power, number nine. <laughs> you know, I think it's interesting that he brings in foreigners to come and be Chief Justices in the Gambia. A Nigerian man was there, that one is now in prison. A Ghanaian woman was there, that one fled back to Ghana, now a Pakistani man. I hope that he can at least wonder what has happened to the eight people that came before him so that he can be very careful. Can you bring a foreigner to be a Chief Justice do you do that in Zimbabwe or South Africa? In Kenya, do you bring foreigners to come and be? I know that can never happen in Nigeria. What I don't understand is that it was a swearing-in ceremony, but Jermaine's speech 
that day. It was all about how British people are bad. British people are this, they are that. And how they ruined the Gambia. I'm like, what? Just listen to this. The British instituted slavery. So for the next 1 billion years, they have no moral platform to talk about human rights anywhere in the world. After 400 years of British occupation and looting in Gambia, the British built only two hospitals and one high school. Well, since you took over power 20 years ago, Mr. President, do you know that you've not done better? Seriously, this man built hospitals in Gambia with no doctors, no good facilities, and no medications. How are you better? Up till now, his mom, his wife, his children, they all go and get treated overseas. In fact, his children come to the U.S. for common immunization, immunization, and he himself goes to France for medical treatment. So if you built a hospital that you yourself cannot use, what's the point? Recently, his nieces were in an accident and they were airlifted to Dakar in Senegal. And from there, they took them to a hospital in Europe. I'm like, wait a minute, a British hospital? Jermaine, seriously, this is the same British people that you're filming about? Seriously, you're confusing me. And in case you're watching, Jermaine, you're really confusing a lot of people. You know that he used to be a security guard for the former president uh, before he took over in a coup. Yeah. When he said that his government has brought development to the doorsteps of Gambians, I stopped reading. <laughs> I said, hey, you know, too much drama for me. I beg. All he did was build one, just one university in the whole of Gambia and one TV station for the whole of Gambia. Till now, I'm telling you, there's only one TV station and only one university in the whole of Gambia. No, seriously, I had to stop reading. I'm like, ah, Jamin, really, you should be ashamed of yourself, really, for all these things that you said. Call it a word, I beg. You should be ashamed of yourself. And just so you know, this man controls the TV station like it's his toy or something. You can ask any Gambian about this. Jamin can be watching TV at home and if he doesn't like what he's seeing on his television, he will call the TV station and tell them to change the program with immediate effect. And they would. As a matter of fact, he decides who he wants to read the news. So if he says that this is the lady that he wants to read the news tonight, no one can say anything about it. So basically the TV is used as this propaganda tool. Nothing negative about him will ever be said on that TV station. He's on the headline every day. In fact, they can't focus on other politicians. It has to be him. He calls the TV anytime and stops shows that are not in his favor. So please, Jamin, in case you're watching next time, Take a good look in the mirror before you go out there and say something. And you know what? Instead of changing the official language, do you know what Gambians would love right now? It is for you to step down. My brother, enough is enough. How else do you want them to tell you? People are tired of you. Just step down and let somebody else do the job. Eh? Mm. Acting as if he doesn't know. People don't like you. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Wait it be my own. I beg. I'm just keeping it real low. So have you guys been following what's happening in Ethiopia? Some women protested during the great Ethiopian women run that was held on March 9th and they arrested and jailed seven of them. Seven! Last Friday, they took them to court and the court denied them bail, sending them back to jail. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. Ethiopia, these women were protesting during a five kilometer run. They were just chanting for freedom in Ethiopia and they were demanding that the government free jailed journalists and political prisoners. I mean, that's the right thing to do. They also voiced their opinion about the unbearable cost of living in the country and they expressed that they are proud daughters of Emperor Menelik and Queen Taitu. I mean, that is not a crime in my opinion. What is going on in Ethiopia? As a matter of fact, I think that Kalido has, you know, the footage of the protest. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Seriously, my people, do you see any crime in what those women were doing? Do you see any crime? Did they hit anybody? Did they injure anybody? Did they destroy any property? Why can't people have a peaceful demonstration and express their dissatisfaction on social, political, and legal issues in their own country? Since when is it a crime to speak out about something that you don't like? Since when don't we have the right to freedom of expression in Ethiopia? If I don't like something, 
doing, I tell the person that is doing it to me that I don't like it. If I can tell that to somebody, why can't I say it to a government that is getting paid taxpayers' money? Seriously, get it together. It's getting in the news all the time. The fact that people cannot say their mind about the government without getting in trouble. It's everywhere, all countries. Everybody know what is going on in Ethiopia. Do you guys know that Rayot Alem, that female journalist who has breast cancer, is still in prison? How do you explain that? And they're not even letting her get basic medical attention. Can you imagine someone suffering from breast cancer? You can imagine how painful that is. And they're not letting her get medical attention? How cruel can you be? Ah uh -uh. And all the Ethiopian officials, get it together. Let this woman go. Let it go. If you're yet to sign the petition, please, there's a petition online for her to be released. Please sign the petition. I can go on and on about so many other journalists that are in prison in um, Ethiopia. It's about time for the Ethiopian government to at least once prove the people wrong. You know, people are now predicting that, oh, there is no freedom of expression in Ethiopia. At least prove us wrong. Release this woman. Release all these journalists. And then we can say, oh, maybe there is freedom of expression after all. Ethiopian president. I hope you're watching this episode because just so you know, Ethiopians all over the world are not happy with what's going on right now. But you know, I mean, what do I know? I'm just keeping it real. So before I leave today, I want to give a shout out to my Nigerian brother. Yes, yes. Oyeyeola Shagun. Hello. Uh, he is a fifth year student at the Obafemi Awolowo University, OAU, and he built a solar powered vehicle. <gasps> Oh my God. Mm-hmm. 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 That's what I'm talking about. So many Nigerians are doing big things. If only, you know, they have the support that they need. We will get to hear more about them. The car is powered by wind and solar energy. He also has a software on his cell phone that tells him the condition of the car. Even if it's not close to where the car is, he can check the battery level. He can check the weather conditions if it's suitable for the car. And the car also has a GPS that it can use to track it down. If anyone tries to steal, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> Seriously, this is genius. Considering the fact that you can build a car in Nigeria that would not need petrol. Oh my God, bless your heart, my brother, bless your heart. I mean, why hasn't the government picked him up by now? I, I think they would have picked him up and invest in his invention. We have the sun all year round in Nigeria and we wouldn't have to keep depending on oil, especially now that uh, petrol is like so expensive from what I've heard. Nigeria, you know, if this guy were to be in Kenya, by now they would have invested in him. That is Kenya, not to talk about if he was here in the US or other parts of the world. Anyway, we are very proud of you, my brother. You know what? Keep it up. Don't stop right now. There is still so much more to do, okay? That is just the beginning. If you're watching my show, hopefully you get to the point where you can actually design your own cars, preferably, you know, something more eye-catching <laughs> yes you know for fine babes like us who may want to order <laughs> please keep dreaming big i mean if you can't find investors in nigeria you never know keep trying you may find elsewhere there are so many international grants that you can apply for and scholarships and stuff like that but we're very proud of what you have done keep it up and guess what i'm just keeping it real all right y'all it's been real and i'm keeping it real right up in here until next week i'm gonna see y'all later peace out